This video loosely simulates a small section of the Welly Loop Line around Rosebridge Junction, higher ints, just south of what was Kirkless Iron and Steelworks. I'm a member of a Facebook group called Lost Railways Around Wigan. There have been some great pictures posted by members of this friendly group, particularly around this area, that inspired me to try to capture a flavour covering the early part of the 20th century up to the 60s. This part of the Welly Loop really is a lost railway, now largely returned to nature. It's difficult to imagine that in my lifetime there were powerful locomotives pounding across the embankment, which is now overgrown and frequented only by recreational bikers and walkers. These maps show the part of the Welly Loop model together with the original Victorian railway lines around this area, serving in particular the Kirkless Iron and Steelworks and the surrounding collieries. The first engine is a Stania Black 5 pulling a mixed goods, steaming through from Welly over the Canal Bridge. These engines roam far and wide, as far north as Wick in Scotland and down south to SR territory. A total of 842 were built, the largest single class on any British railway, and was a tremendous success. The Welly Loop was part of a series of lines of the Lancashire Union Railway, promoted by the mine owners of Lancashire and Cheshire, to complete the line of communication between Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway and the London and North Western Railway. The Loop was built to allow trains to bypass Wigan on the east, on a route from Blackburn to St Helens, and to provide further links for the coalfields to market. With the first sod cut on the 31st of July 1866, the lines were officially opened in December 1869. Together with a map from the early 20th century, which gives an idea of the industry around there at the time, let's have a look round and just see how much has changed. If we pop our heads above the rabbit rocks, we glimpse a sight of the vast Kirkless Iron and Steelworks with its blast furnaces and coke ovens. Actually, at the time of the trains depicted in this video reconstruction, the works had closed over 30 years previously when production was shifted to Earlham with the Rosebridge Junction tracks long being lifted. Looking south at over what is now a large housing estate, we see Rosebridge Colliery in the foreground. This colliery had a mixed history with mining operations stopping and starting, the colliery finally closing on the 24th of July 1941. In 1933 the output was 100,000 tonnes employing 250 underground and 100 surface workers. For a spell, the deepest shaft in the UK at 2,448 feet. The evidence of the original location is now well hidden in a wooden area just behind the housing estate off of Edinburgh Close. The descent down the shaft took 45 seconds with speeds reaching at the middle of the shaft approaching 60 miles an hour. A newspaper report in 1881 understated that those that had not done this before, the, the sensation was far from pleasant and the dancing of the cages that approached the bottom somewhat peculiar. Once arrived at the bottom there was a 200 yard stooping walk to the pit face. By the 60s the signal box depicted had actually gone, with the junction connecting the works and Springs Branch being obsolete. I read a post on the Wigan World Forum that apparently any steam locos requiring water at the water column at Rosebridge had to whistle a code on the locos whistle when approaching Welly Junction signal box. The code was one long blast and three short ones. Sounding the code would inform the signalman en route that the train would be stopped in this section for a while between Roundhouse and De Trafford to take on water. The second loco, this is 260 Stanya Mogul, pulling a special excursion from Sheffield to Blackpool. The line used to pass over Bell Green Lane, next to a local school. Again from another post from Wigan World, somebody reminisced that there were a pupil there, and it was great to watch the trains passing by. It stopped lessons because of the noise and the building used to shake. This would have been something like the view from the school. Normally it would have been quite unusual to see passenger trains on the loop. Originally, on the 1st of January 1872, 
The Lancashire Union Railway opened two passenger stations on the line, one at Welly and one at Amberswood. At the time of opening, Welly and Amberswood were served by three trains per day which ran to Liverpool. The service wasn't a success and ceased after only two months, possibly the shortest lift stations in history. Obviously someone hadn't done a business plan. In 1939, the Welly Loop carried only one regular passenger train, the 5.10pm express from Manchester to Windermere. However, the Welly Loop carried numerous goods and sometimes excursions and diverted passenger trains well into the 60s. The line was closed in 1970 but reopened briefly in 1972 when it was singled and finally it went out of use in 1976. I read somewhere that the Welly Loop carried virtually every banana eaten in Scotland in the 1930s from the opening of a specially designed banana ripening shed at Garston Docks until the outbreak of war. I was particularly drawn to this picture, posted by a member of a 9F210 number 92115 on the Welly Loop Line section across the Springs Branch in Bell Green Lane with a car transporter full of Ford Anglias. Now this picture took me right back to the 60s when I remember crudely gluing together an Airfix kit the 9F92220 Evening Star, which I understood to be the final British Railway steam locomotive ever built. We didn't see this class of local on the south coast where I live, but checking my Ian Allen combined from 1963, I'm pleased to say I apparently have seen one, and the record was 92002. Where I saw it on my travels, I haven't a clue. Looking to the east, we glimpsed the top of the houses of Bell Green Lane going up to John Street, Prince Street and York Street, most of which are long replaced. After trains passed over Bell Green Lane, they would quickly pass over the Springs Branch Railway. Well, this is the end of my small excursion. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. It gives you a flavour of one of the many, many lost railways around Wigan.